All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to Costumes TV. Season four, week fourteen is over, and we have the pre-patch, which is one of the longest maintenance windows I have seen in a long time. But it is over. We are done. We're into the post pre-patch week, week fourteen, and it actually felt really, really good. I think there were some fantastic changes of week fourteen. You've got the currency changes that can be shared across your warband now. The warband changes, of course, and then all of the talent changes to multiple classes. We're gonna jump into some of those that i played today but yeah i was going through some of my alts my mage needed to get redone my druid needed to get redone and obviously my death knight needed to get redone and that's where we're gonna start the week off today because oh my god death knight feels amazing the changes to the talent tree and how the spec plays have are unbelievable and they feel fan fantastic i was very impressed uh me and the crew we actually went in and started doing some keys and if you caught some of the live streams you would have seen that we were blasting through not only keys on the death knight but also on the rep palette so we're going to go over all that today we're going to take a look at how the warband looks but first let's jump into the death knight now the death knight doesn't have anything to talk about in regards to gear upgrades mainly because he doesn't really need anything so he is still 528.94 no changes to his gear no upgrades everything is already maxed so nothing we can do with his gear but let's talk about what he did do in mythic plus now last week i made a little joke and i said hey you know maybe we'll go try to hit 3k and kind of see how that feels like well it wasn't really much of a joke because take a look at this we did it we went and we got 3k last week the destiny started at 2672 io and we finished the week off at 3036 as you can see in our fortified week we ran a lot of keys i made a joke to one of our the one of the guys i run keys with saying we're not just gonna run a 15 we're gonna run four 15s and we did actually run four 15s we didn't time them all we had a couple challenges one of the nilferis dps felt really low but that's okay we still ended up getting 3k and so what did we complete we started off last week with an 11 AA. Now, as you can see, the AA we actually have is a 15. So the 11 gave us 21 points, and then the 15, we two chested the 15 and got 39 points. Now, in the description below, I actually posted that video. It is in the playlist for your Dragonflight Dungeons. Take a look at that. I'll post an info card in the description down below. There's also a video for the 14 Halls of Infusion we did on the Death Knight as well. Both of those keys are posted online. So let's take a look at what did we complete this week. Like I said, the 15 AA, we have a 15 Bracket Hide Hollow, which gave us 62 points. We ended up doing a 14 halls of infusion we only one chest of that but that gave us 52 points we did a 14 aldemon this one was was also just single chested for 48 points we did a 13 azure vault we two chested this one for 34 points we did a 13 no kud two chested this as well which gave us 38 points we did a 12 ruby this is where we kind of started we started the 12 ruby life pools and two chested it which gave us 48 points and from the, that we went to the halls of infusion which we single chested and then we also then we went to the algothar academy me, which we two chested and ended up getting a 17 bracken hide out of that we didn't try the 17 bracken hide i ended up getting a 15 so we tried that and then we also did a Neltharis and 11 which gave us 22 points this was also two chested so fantastic week on the blood death Knight. i do think the team plans on pushing a little more it is a sanguine week this week which is unfortunate i'm just not a fan of sanguine and and tyrannical like it just it will we'll see how it feels though like classes felt really good we were blasting keys triple dps like it felt so good to play the death knight the talents feel great the changes feel great i felt unstoppable like i felt like i was an unkillable machine i was doing decent damage so yeah that is where the death knight ends his week off and with that let's just jump directly into his vault let's see what he gets in his vault this week uh we will be opening it in on holy spec as we always do let's push the button there isn't much that he needs right so i'm really just i don't know what to expect out of him i think he's got some vault slots yes he does he's got some uh raid and he's got some dungeons so let's start off with the raid slots we've got the uh weapon the bone crusher which we don't need i think we already we already we have this transmog mythic track legs which we also don't need because we already have those we have mythic track crit haste plate waste we're not going to take that we could take it for the appearance so that that's a maybe homeland raid horn we don't need that it's completely useless we have our main trickets we also got the smasher which is another great weapon but because we have Feralath, it is not needed and then we have the headpiece so really i kind of want to take the belt for the transmog anyway it would go towards one of the transmogs i'm not sure which one but it would um out of all of this let's see what do we need for sockets ken is there gear we can socket and do we have any tokens right now that we could use so we've got eight tokens that we can currently use to socket gear so we could socket the wrist here here let's let's take a look at what we can socket if i go buy this right now prices in the aisle the last piece we can only socket is the wrist so there is not much left for me to get on the death knight so let's just take the belt literally for transmog that is all 
And that did go towards our Mythic Amir Drasil set. So yeah, not bad actually. This doesn't look terrible. I don't mind it on the Tauren at all. The red is definitely the best one. So what is the plan with the DK? We obviously hit 3k IO. I think we will push that up maybe to 3.1. I think that's doable. We had a bunch of keys that are still eights and nines, no tens on tyrannical. So I think we're going to blast up sub tyrannical keys over 10. Most we all started with 15 keys. So we have a 15 key that we can all start with and kind of push. I got a 15 no Theris, probably not the funnest key, but I believe it would be doable. Well, as I said, the pre-patch changes do feel really good. I run with a resto shammy and he's having a blast. I have no concerns when he's, he, he's, with us it looks like the party's always healthy and i do some pretty big pulls so i'm looking forward to that so we're going to push for 3ko with him i'm going to do some of the pre-patch events most likely on the dk get him the achievements because i haven't done any of that and then i want to see how i can transfer some of the currencies over to him as well and see if i can buy some amounts with uh i'm warped badges that's what they're called so that's what we're going to try to transfer over see how much we have and then we're going to use those yeah so that is the plan for the dk i think he's going to be a lot of fun i've been having a lot of fun with him and i'm looking forward to pushing some more io on him and with that let's move on to the next character all right and next up we have the paladin which i have been having a fantastic time playing this class i continue to get better on him i continue to watch my dps increase and even so last week we got taken to a 12 key that was the highest key he did we got taken to a bunch of 10 keys Paladin was doing great. We're going to take a look at the IO here in just one second. But let's start off with looking at his gear and I level upgrades. Unfortunately, I am stuck in this world where I need worm crests, which are just below aspects. Now, I don't want to trade my aspects for worm crests because aspects are just hard to get. So I am in this conundrum of I can upgrade. I have enough aspects to upgrade his gear, but I don't have the worms to get to the next level to where I need to use the aspects. So I am stuck in this terrible spot right now i did end up running a couple of raids i got into i believe a normal or heroic raid i can't really remember but i got into both of those and i really just went to farm i believe they're both heroic sorry and i went just to farm them we streamed that live on sunday but we went to farm them just for the worm crest just to see what we could do and sure enough i did get enough to, to do some upgrades so let's quickly talk about what those upgrades uh, first of all we got the upgraded ring the unstable arcane loop this we got from the av we ran uh, it was actually traded to us and this replaced the hero track exact same ring we have and both actually have sockets so lucky there we were able to upgrade our signet brand finally straight up to 528 it was 509 so we got that right up to 528 uh, our headpiece we upgraded up from 5 12 to 522 we also upgraded our chest from 512 to 519 we got that great upgraded all the way we traded hero track oh my god i didn't put them on i have we have 506 shoulders that we're going to catalyze that replace the hero track 496 or the champion track 496 shoulders we have I have to catalyze these so that was one of the upgrades we got our hands we catalyze we're going to catalyze these as well they're 515 hands that replaced our 496 champion hands so great upgrade there our waste piece we upgraded from 509 to 519 and then we also did our back piece we got it traded actually so there's no enchant on it yet but we had a champion track back piece at 502 we now have a 509 hero track so i can upgrade a lot of pieces the challenge right now is like i said i don't have the worm crest to do it so we're kind of stuck in that world so the paladin went from 509 item level up to 516.19 not a massive jump we're almost at the 520 mark but like i said i have a ton of upgrades i can do i am just stuck in the world of i don't have enough worm crest to do the upgrade so hopefully we can work on that this week and finally break that 520 eye level barrier and next up this is the funnest thing this is this is the best part we knocked out a bunch of keys on the paladin his io went up significantly at the end of the week i needed two more keys last night and i just really wanted to knock out two more just so i can get the uh some io on them because originally i had some sevens still and untimed keys so i made sure everything was eight or higher in time and let's take a look at what we did last week so starting with uh we were at so so the Paladin had 23.18 IO when he finished last week. We're looking at almost a 300 IO increase this week. And where did some of those points come from? Well, simply enough, we did a 10 Halls of Infusion. This got us 46 points and we two chested it. We ended up doing an 8 Alterac Valley, which gave us 2 points. We did a 9 Alterac Valley. Sorry, we did an 8 Alterac Valley to give us 22 points. We did a 9 Alterac Valley that gave us 4 points. And then we did a 10 Alterac Valley that gave us 8 points. We also did a 10 
Algathar Academy. We two chested this one for eight for 104 points. We actually had no Algathar Academy. So this was a huge, huge jump in IO because we had nothing here. So went from no key to a 10 key for 104 points and a two chest. We ended up doing a 10 Alderman for 37 points. We also did a nine Brackenhide Hollow. We three chested this one for eight points. And then the key that I was really proud of that was playing in the background is the 12 Nilferis. This one gave us 58 points and this was a really fun key to do. So all in all, almost a 300 IO jump for the Paladin. 2605 is where we finished off the week. I am very happy with that. Let's from there just jump directly into opening his vault. We're going to keep it as retribution. Let's see what he gets. He should have some raid and he should have some dungeon slots. Let's take a look at how he looks. All right, here we go. We've got the heroic pieces up here, and then we've got the mythic pieces down here. Let's start with raid, and we've got the heroic feet at 512. We already have mythic track. These have leech, but we're still not going to take them. We have the soul cleaver. We also already have this transmog. We don't need to take this two-handed weapon, and we have ashcander. We're not trying to get feralath, so that's fine. We have tier 512 hands. Now, this would save us from having to catalyze, but it would go down one because of the upgrade track. So it's probably easier because I have so many catalyst charges. I'm probably just going to catalyze it, so I don't need the hands. All right, taking a look here, we have the Haste Mastery Neck, the Locket from Broman from Bromac. This is actually probably a really good upgrade. I'm going to have to take a look at if this is one of our preferred necklaces right now. It flips the Haste and the Mastery stats on my character. We have a Mythic Track Crit Mastery Ring. Massive, massive amounts of mastery. Really nice ring. And then we have the mythic track tier piece at one of four now that would be nice but we these would be significant upgrades if we were to take them right these i think are the overall so give me one second to take a look at how these items fit into our stat pool so I really, really wish Sims were working. So basically what we're doing here, it's either we're swapping our haste and mastery or we're getting more mastery, losing a ton of haste and getting crit. So this is kind of a top one. Crit, uh, sorry, haste is one of our best stats. So haste mastery is what we're looking for. And that ring that we would replace it has a ton of haste and we would but we would lose that, which would hurt a little. But then we have Bromax, which is a ton of haste, but then we lose mastery. Now, currently, our mastery is sitting at 64%. So we could flip those stats around, have the Mythic Track neck piece, and then kind of go from there. Rings rings are easy to come by, right? And I could probably get this ring from a key or something similar, right? Because this does come from... The one I have on comes from Lairdar, right? And if I run another heroic raid, I might be able to get it. So I'm going to take the locket and I'm going to throw on the gems into it and see how that treats me. So let's take the neck. I mean, it is a massive item level jump. So let's take that and let's see where we end the week off on the Paladin. He has a 12 legacy of tier to start. Kind of funny. That's where we got the neck from. And we're looking at a one item level jump from, from 516.19 to 517.19. All right, and what's the plan for the Paladin this week? Well, we've got a ton of Booleans on him. We're going to use those probably right after this to buy some transmogs. I really like some of the shield transmogs you can get in the game. So I'm thinking, you know what, let's take the Paladin and go get the some of those transmogs. He's got eight of those. I will definitely plan on running a ton more keys. I would like to time tens across the board for Tyrannical this week. So that is the goal in the Paladin. Ten at minimum is the target, which should be absolutely achievable with how the week has been going last week. Um, we will probably do raid because he needs some of the worm crest, and I'm hoping I can upgrade a lot more of his gear. So that is what the plan is for the Paladin. He has been a lot of fun. I continue to plan, keep blasting on him. So you will see him more during the live streams. And surprise, surprise, we have the Vengeance TH that we did a bunch of keys on. We're not going to go over him very much. I didn't really expect to really be pushing on him very significantly, so I'm not going to be tracking his IO, but he is at 1885. I know he is significantly down. We did a bunch of eight keys last week. I think we did three eights and a six, so that will be what we get in our vault today. Uh, he went from, I think, 496 to 500 eye levels. Not bad, a bunch of upgrades, but let's take a look at what she gets in her vault this week. Right, I did LFR because I was trying to get more of the Booleans, and I got none, and I thought they fixed it, but I guess maybe I was wrong, but I got no Booleans out of them this week. Oh, but we got Mythic Track legs that we can catalyze and a 515 here track weapon. I'm taking these legs, so I will definitely be catalyzing them, so that is how the DH is looking. 
All right, and let's talk about some of the things we did in Mopland. I actually had this sudden urge to play Arcane Mage. I don't know why. I just, I really, really, really felt like I want to play Arcane Mage. So I decided one of the allied races I still have never made, and I'm not even a fan of this model. I don't like the Blood Elf model at all, so I really avoid the classes. But I thought, you know what? Let's make a Void Elf, and let's make him my Arcane Mage. So that's what I did. We created a Void Elf. And actually, this was really cool, going over some of the different customizations that I have. I've never made one. So, and it's funny, because, like, they have certain things that make them look like a draenei so they have like the tentacles and of course me being me i took advantage of that and i started looking at all the different hairstyles that have these tentacles in them because i really wanted them and i think they look really cool they have like the purple wave coming out of the back of them so i thought that was a really cool thing to see and yeah i made a void elf yeah this is probably going to be my last mop remix character after this i think i'm basically done with mop remix i have to do my hunter my priest and this character now and they will all be at level 70 so now that they made some nurse to the xp requirement to hit 70 and they made it a little easier um someone said that you could actually go from like level 28 to 70 now so i thought this like i said i'm gonna make this mage this will be my last one and i want to try it out and as always i'm just i'm running through i'm still gonna be doing his heroic daily every day not picking up the bonus xp and then we're gonna blast him up to 70 when he's ready so i've been doing that on him i've been doing that on the Valpira hunter i created and also the shadow priest that i've made as well speaking of the void mage i do want to say i think the void elves have the best character select screen possible in the game i think this just looks fantastic the void the colors the darkness the planet in the background being eaten by nazoth or some being it just i think this looks fantastic i think uh the void elves are officially my favorite character select screen in the game i absolutely love it but this is the void elf that we'll be working on and doing all our dailies um what else did we do in Mo that is really all we've been doing in mop remix we haven't really been doing a lot like i said i'm kind of nearing the end of the characters i want to level uh we've got a ton of 70s if you kind of look at my list here you know 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 so yeah we've got so many level 70s that i just i probably won't even play all of them right we got two characters actually right now that are ready to get blasted up to level 70 so let's quickly take care of this we have our uh dk uh, it says that we are ready to open we're in negative 4.57 so let me just quickly get some of these out of the way just because i don't last time i did this i failed and i don't want to embarrass myself he is level 31 let's see if we can do it right this time let's push the button let's hit the open thing and let's just kind of hope he just blasts up to level 70 so i'll have him and i'll have the warrior we'll do right after just gotta blast them up off screen and then the other thing i've actually been doing with a lot of my alts now it's speculated that if you it's speculated that the item level that gets transferred into retail matches kind of what your character has on now now obviously if it is low your item level is going to be lower like much lower than what the retail item level is and then it's going to be a little harder to do some of the leveling and the dailies and all that stuff so what i've been actually doing and i'll do it on the death knight right now is you can get the bronze quests that give you three and seven and 30k bronze so there's about an extra 40k bronze there and then with your in my actual character i have about 77 000 bronze so what i've started doing is to kind of get his item level up a little higher and i've done this to all my 70 so far the ones that have all the extra bronze just sitting there you can upgrade their lowest item level gear up to 346 for almost nothing it only costs about 5k bronze so i've been doing this to all of my gear across all of my characters in the hopes of that when they get transferred into retail they're not so far behind that you know leveling them actually becomes a painful process so i do recommend if you've got 70s kicking around that you're not doing with that you've blasted up using the mailbox trick use that extra bronze upgrade their gear up to 70 and then that way you can just not worry too much about when these characters are transferred into retail and how low item level there are or you have to go to the auction house and buy stuff i'm hoping that at 346 we get relatively decent gear in near the 500 island level range i'm assuming our characters that have 476 gear will get over 500 eye level gear obviously this is pure speculation nobody actually knows what it's going to look like and i am just guessing so i do encourage you to go through this if it's something you haven't done yet so in regards to mop remix that is probably it for me once i finish these last three characters i will most likely be done with mop remix we only have about 20 days left we are that close to re hit reaching the war within that's the plan there outside of that what are some other things that we did uh at the start of the week it was pre-patch day 
one of the longest maintenance windows I have ever experienced in the history of me playing World of Warcraft. Now I say that, but I'm sure over the 20 years there have been longer periods, but basically while on patch day, I went in and I checked out the warband and I started organizing some of my characters since everything was kind of all over the place. So I went in, I shuffled some around, I pulled some up and down, made some changes just because they were a bit of a mess, right? And it was hard to kind of follow. I also went in and this I found, realized I had level one characters on servers. I never knew I had level one characters on. So I went in, I deleted those. So that's kind of what we did on day one once we were online. Some of the other things we did on patch day, it, I was really cool to see the changes to all the currencies, to see the warband for itself, kind of picking my four favorite characters and throwing them in there. I think with the warband now, it is a cool idea to transmog and show some and be able to show off some of your top characters. Like here I have, you know, my my DK, my Paladin, my Valpira, and my Monk. The warband system, I think is really cool. I like it. Apparently we may even in the future get different backgrounds for our warbands. And I think that'd be great. I think we could go to a zone and kind of pick that zone as a unlockable background. I think that'd be really cool. I would go right for the void one. I think that would look fantastic. But yes, yeah, so that was pre-patch day one. And then we kind of went off and did all the other stuff. Now, what is the plan for this week? Week 15, we are so close to the end of the season. War Within can't come any sooner, but I know there's a whole bunch of quests that got released with the pre-patch event. So I'm going to be working through those on my characters, just getting through the, the pre-patch events, picking up some of the toys and the appearances you can get. I'll, I'll see about transferring my currencies, getting all that done. I'll finish the three characters in Mop Remix. And then of course, I'm just going to blast more IO on both my DK and my Paladin and maybe play some alts. I haven't really played the Monk. We do need to continue our journey into Underwrought. We still don't have the mount there. So that's going to happen. So that's going to continue. And then we'll see what else the week has to bring. I hope you guys have had a fantastic week. I hope your vaults have been good. And I think, and I hope you can, you've been achieving all the things you want to achieve in the game or and outside. So thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Until next week, have a fantastic week. Enjoy week 15. Go Blast. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.